and basics of mandibular fracture today we'll discuss about the management of mandibular fractures whether it is a very stable patient who is lying in a private ward with only subtle signs of mandibular fracture like sublingual hematoma or it is a patient in the red area of the triad zone with other comorbidities of airway breathing and circulation the basic treatment atls protocol will always be a b c d e that is you have to take care of the airway along with cervical spine control first the breathing and ventilation second the circulation and hemorrhage control third the disability or the neurological condition along with the gcs and pupil size as fourth and the exposure of the patient and the environment con control as the fifth part of the primary survey of any trauma patient of atls protocol for like because this patient might be lying nicely but he might have a subdural hematoma or an extradural hematoma and he may have a lucid interval right now so the primary survey of atls protocol should follow the a b c d e and the management of mandibular fractures comes under the secondary survey of the atls protocol so what are the ways to treat a mandibular fracture either you can go for no treatment which is done in rare cases as we will discuss or you can go for closed reduction and maxillomandibular fixation or you can go for the orif or the open reduction and internal fixation now no treatment is done in cases where there is condylar fracture in children which is not causing any occlusal derangement mind you this is one of the very simple and very um, least indication of no treatment as children have a very good repair ability and they can remodel their condyles also there is no functional derangement because there is no occlusal derangement so in these cases you just have to ask the children to open and close their mouths to prevent the development of tmj ankylosis so active physiotherapy with no closed or open reduction is done in condylar fractures of children where there is no occlusal derangement whenever there is occlusal derangement you have to do closed reduction whenever there is a low condyle or subcondylar fracture in adult you have to do chloroduction or orif so in cases of children with no occlusal derangement a no treatment strategy can be followed a closed reduction and maxillomandibular fixation can be chosen in almost all cases of mandibular fracture only in certain cases like comminuted fracture or when the patient's will is that i want surgery and i don't want to keep my mouth closed for 4 to 5 weeks then you have to go for orif otherwise most cases of simple mandibular fractures can be managed with closed reduction and imf now what are the ways to do closed reduction the simplest and the most commonly used method is the arch bar there are different kinds of arch bar this is an eric arch bar the other is shutart arch bar and different other arch bars are present so this is a arch bar where each tooth is held to the arch bar with wires and the arch bar has hooks facing upwards in the maxilla and hooks facing downwards in the mandible these hooks can be used to fix the maxilla and mandible together either with the use of elastics or with the use of wires the advantage of elastics is that these elastics help in reduction of the fracture that is suppose there is a fracture here and the fragments since you are not doing an open reduction we can't see the fragments so in closed reduction we can guide the displaced fracture fragment towards the desired direction with the help of this elastics they can also help in opening and closing of mouth like suppose there is a child with condylar fracture with deranged occlusion so you put arch bar and you give these guiding elastics so this guiding elastics will keep the occlusion in correct position along with that also allow certain opening and closing of the mouth to prevent development of ankylosis in the child the other method is direct wiring where just wires are put on the upper and lower jaw teeth and they are fixed together this is a very temporary and a very quick way which is usually used in cases of undisplaced occlusion or in ot the other method of closed reduction in imf is the iv loops this kind of a loop i am showing you this because it can be used as an image based question it can be asked in exam a loop is made the two wires are passed across the two teeth and they are fixed together such a loop is made in the upper jaw and lower jaw and the IMF is done. This is also a quick method, but you can't put elastic. मतलब it is difficult to put elastics in this method. Another method is IMF screw, where a per mucosal screws. That is, you don't even have to put an incision. Just you can drill the screws through the mucosa into the bone. So many screws are not used. We usually put 
two screws in maxilla and two screws in mandible in the anterior to the mental foramen region and we just do an IMF. This is a very quick method. It is used for temporary IMF in the OT or used in cases where teeth are less in number or where the periodontal condition of teeth is very poor and they cannot give adequate fixation for arch bar. In such cases, we use the IMF screw. Another method is the interdental wiring. This is also called brittle wiring and this is also a temporary method usually used in emergency conditions or in temporary conditions or it is used in children as a sole means of um, reduction like in this girl she's a uh, six seven year old girl with some permanent teeth and mostly deciduous teeth and there is a closed fracture of symphysis which is minimally displaced so to give her good function and to prevent development of ankylosis we don't want to do IMF so we keep her on soft diet and we just put a direct interdental wire across the segments so that there is immobility of course there is not absolute immobility but still since the healing potential in children is very good we expect a fracture healing in uh, 10 to 15 days and for that this interdental wiring suffice it cannot be used as a method in adults or in defect fractures or in comminuted fractures it is only a, um, a method in either simple fractures in children or as a temporary measure for adult patients or geriatric patients, gunning splints are used where the dentures, arch bars are incorporated into the denture. The denture is fixed to the mandible or maxilla with uh, screws or circumandibular wires and elastics and wires are used. Coming to open reduction internal fixation, most questions in all examinations are based on ORIF and the ORIF in mandibular fractures depends on which area you are talking about. Also it depends on whether you are treating an adult or a pediatric or an old adult patient with less bone stock or a defect fracture which has less bone stock. We will talk about each area separately. So a symphysis fracture is the one which runs between the central incisors and a parasymphysis is the one which is medial to the canines. In short you can call this the anterior mandibular fractures which lie anterior to the mental foramen. There are two ways to treat a symphysis or an anterior mandibular fracture. Either you can follow the Champis principles or you cannot follow the Champis principles. The Champis principle says that if you put two plates in the anterior mandible in just below the apices and another one in the lower border using monocortical screws then it is an adequate functionally stable fixation. It is not a rigid fixation because these mini plates are not rigid enough to take the load of the mandible they are not load bearing they are load sharing fixation they are semi rigid functionally stable fixation because during function it will keep the fracture fragment stable so Champis principle says two fracture mini plates in the anterior mandible fractures will give a good fixation the forces here are tension on the superior border so when the patient chews because of the occlusal forces the two segments will try to go away from each other in the superior border this is called tension and because it is fixed to the joint there will be compression in the lower border that means that the fragments will come to, towards each other so to negate this compression and tension you use two mini plates also in the anterior mandible region there is a torsional force that is the segments tend to move lingually when there is a fracture during function this there is a torsional force towards the lingual side. To prevent that also, Champi has uh, suggested two mini plates using monocortical screws. Now, the advantage of monocortical screws is that this is a cross section. If you see the root apices and take a cross section across the mandible, so these are the root apices. These monocortical screws will penetrate only one cortex. This is one cortex, this is another cortex, and this is the medulla. So, monocortical screws will not damage the tooth roots as they will penetrate only one cortex just into the medulla and it will never damage the roots or if they are used in the body and angle region it will not damage the neurovascular bundle so this is a very beautiful advantage of the monocortical screws also the anterior mandibular fractures can be uh, can be used treated using non champis principles that is a compression plate with a tension band so a compression plate will compress the fracture fragments together but since it cannot be placed in the area of tension that is the superior border 
because it uses bicortical screws anything that causes uses bicortical screws has to be used away from the root apices and away from the neurovascular bundle so in the anterior mandible it has to be used either below the apices or at the inferior border usually we use re reconstruction plate and compression plates are out of use in most cases now and since they are not placed in the area of tension you have to put a tension band in the superior border now this tension band can be anything it can be either a simple mini plate it can be an acrylic bar it can be your simple arch bar also that can act as a tension band so that is one disadvantage of using compression plate also the compression plate is very bulky it will be palpated in the chin region when a man is shaving his chin area it can be felt if it's a thin uh, man with less subcutaneous tissue and less fat it can be palpated from outside it usually needs removal after 6 months when the fracture is healing and it causes compression that is a primary healing of the bone which is an advantage it is a rigid fixation so it can be used in areas where there is a defect or where the bone stock is not very good so we can use rigid fixation another way of rigid fixation is the reconstruction plate now a reconstruction plate will hold the fragments together but it will not cause compression it is a much thicker plate than a mini plate so it is usually used for rigid fixation using bicortical screws now as i said bicortical screws if we are using you have to use it in the lower border you can't use it in the upper border because it will injure the root apices so a recon plate is also used in the lower border using bicortical screws usually we use recon plate in comminuted fractures or in defect fractures in simple fractures a mini plate is enough another thing that you can use is a lag screw now this is a conventional lag screw that is used in orthopedics so it will engage one fracture fragment with the threads and another fragment it will not engage it will just pull one fragment towards the other like in this case where two lag screws are used when when we put the lag screw like this it the threads will engage this segment but when we keep on tightening this lag segment will be coming to this segment so it will pull this engaged segment towards the unengaged segment in maxillofacial surgery we don't get this kind of lag screws we get only long screws with threads all over the screw so what we do we drill a small hole in the distal fragment and we drill a large hole in the proximal segment so that the threads will engage only the distal segment and pull the segment towards the other segment which has a large hole which the threads are not engaging whenever you are using a lag screw a counter sink has to be made so that the screw head is not palpated over the bone here also lag screw is usually used when there are oblique fractures in the symphysis because it's a good thing to use in oblique fractures so two lag screws have to be used for good fixation lag screws will cause compression and load sharing fixation they are not bulky enough to cause load bearing they are just two screws so they will cause a load sharing fixation but give compression of the segments or you can use one lag screw with one mini plate in a anterior mandibular fracture so just to go again in anterior mandibular fracture you can use a compression plate with a tension band you can use a reconstruction plate with or without a tension band you can use two lag screws or you can use one lag screw with one mini plate the approaches for anti mandibular fracture are a pre existing laceration whenever the exam it comes that what is the best approach for any xyz fracture the best approach is a pre existing laceration that is already because of the injury there is one laceration and you are going into the fracture line through this laceration fixing it and also repairing the laceration if this laceration is not there you can go via intraoral approach through the vestibule you can open the vestibule you can reflect the mentalis muscle you can fix the plate and then you can close it in two layers otherwise there will be which is tin deformity because the mentalis will sag or you can go via extraoral approach through the skin in the submental region a very important kind of a dressing needs to be done in symphysis and paraphysis fracture this kind of tape dressing has to be done for 2 3 days otherwise the mentalis might not attached to its original position and it can cause a sagging of mentalis or a which is tin deformity in practice i have never seen such a deformity probably because we are using this kind of a dressing uh it's a rare deformity but it can be seen also in paraphysis fracture the mental nerve injury can be seen i will discuss certain cases this was a case of a 23 year old male who came to us with road traffic accident deranged occlusion 
right parasymphysis fracture and the patient wanted an open reduction and internal fixation. So as we see the axial or transverse cut in the CT, we go from the occlusal surface, we go downwards towards the chin. There is no fracture, no fracture. Here we can visualize some fracture. Here there is an obvious fracture which is causing displacement of bony segments. So the first step in any ORF is fixing the occlusion. First you have to fix the occlusion. Then you have to fix the bone because even if you fix the bone correctly and occlusion is deranged, you are giving an inadequate function to the patient. So to give a proper function to the patient, the first step is occlusal fixation. So we fix the arch bar, we do an IMF, we go through an intraoral incision, we see the fracture line directly with our eyes, that is why it is called an open reduction. We put two plates here, the patient was not very affording, that is why we use stainless steel plates. And this is the post-operative OPG. The patient also had some other fractures for which we got a PNS view done. Another case of a 23-year-old male with a right parasymphysis fracture, there was occlusal derangement. You can see gagging of occlusion here and open bite here. We have put too many plates and very beautifully this mental nerve is preserved. Now this I wanted to show you because sometimes the fracture is not very clearly defined that this is a parasymphysis and this is a body. Like this fracture is starting in the parasympathesis region and going up to the distal to the mental foramen that is up to the body region. So here you have to decide depending on the case that whether uh, you need one mini plate or two mini plates or whether a recon plate will be better. So case to case basis you have to decide here mental nerve paresthesia will be there but in long term there will be no paresthesia as we have preserved the mental nerve here there are two mental nerves uh, very nicely we have preserved it and two mini plates are fixed. Another case of a 50 year old male with symphysis fracture, there was no occlusal derangement so we have chosen to use IMF screws it is, as it is very quick and we can put just in 5 minutes we can put two screws and IMF whereas an arch bar takes around 20 to 25 minutes even in trained hands and IMF was done, fracture was opened. This is a very important instrument that I wanted to show, this is a bone a reduction forceps. You put drill two holes in the two segments. You put this forceps and you use the clamp to bring the segments together so that before you put the plate there is adequate compression between the fragments and since it was a um, comminuted fracture here we have chosen a reconstruction plate in the inferior border using bicortical screws. This is the bone holding forceps which has one ball end and one sharp end and this is bone reduction forceps which has two sharp ends. This can come as image based question in exam. You can put these two sharp ends in two segments and using this clamp here you can tighten, you can bring these segments close together so there is, there is adequate reduction before you put the plate. Coming to body and angle fractures, body is the area distal to canine and mesial to the third molar and this is the angle region that is before the ascending ramus. Again if you want to use Champy's principle then distal to the mental foramen you have to use a single mini plate in this neutral zone. This area in the middle of the mandible that is this is the superior border, this is the inferior border and this is the neutral zone. This neutral zone you have to put a single mini plate in the body fracture and in angle fracture you have to put a single mini plate across this external oblique ridge. Why you have to do this is because like if this is a fracture and the occlusal forces are coming anterior to the fracture, it will cause tension on the superior border and compression on the inferior border. Whereas in neutral zone, there will be not much change. Again, if there is forces on the posterior to the fracture line, there will be tension on the inferior border and compression on the superior border. Again, in the neutral zone, there will be not much change. Again, lateral forces will cause lingual splaying and there will be tension on the lingual surface. So Shampi said, if you put a single plate here in the neutral zone, it will not give a rigid fixation. It will give a functionally stable fixation. That is, whenever there is a function, whenever the patient is chewing, the fixation will be stable enough to cause adequate fracture healing. It will be not a primary healing. It will not be a primary healing. It will be a secondary kind of a feeling with callus formation, with some micro movement between the fracture fragments. But studies have shown that the primary healing and secondary healing of bone have adequate equal strength in the post healing phase. So a secondary healing using mini plates in the neutral zone is as good as a compression plate used 
here which will cause a primary healing but compression plate will be bulky will reduce will mostly need an extra oral incision will need removal in 6 months will cause loose loosening screw loosening all these kind of problems so shampi has suggested on single bini plate in the body region below the root apices and above the mental foramen and one single mini plate in the angle region in the external oblique region sometimes if you feel that a single mini plate is not rigid enough you can use two mini plates also in both these regions or you can just forget champi's principles and use a reconstruction plate or universal fracture plate or a compression plate all these have to be used along with the tension band all these have to be used in the lower border all these have to be used with bicortical screws like this the screws one cortex medulla another cortex they have to penetrate both the cortices and how will you ensure that they have penetrated both the cortices it should be coming out slightly on the lingual surface where you can palpate it with your fingers the approaches are the existing laceration which is the best approach a transoral approach that is intraorally through the vestibule into the ascending ramus or extraoral approach where you give you a uh, submandibular or a residence incision you reflect the skin you reflect the subcutaneous tissue you reflect the platysma after reflecting the platysma you look for the superficial fascia you reflect it you look for facial artery and vein you ligate the facial artery and vein they are usually found near the lymph node of star and after you reflect the flap which contains the facial artery and vein you also reflect the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve which is protected within this flap so one of the purpose of ligating and searching for the facial artery and vein is to protect this margin mandibular nerve this maneuver is called the hayes martin maneuver it is sometimes asked in exam so you should know the hayes martin maneuver is done to protect the margin mandibular branch of the facial nerve now when i am saying that i am going to do a intraoral plating in the angle region it is very difficult thing because to put these screws here intraorally is very difficult for that you have to use a special instrument set which is a transbuccal trocar cannula set it is difficult to uh, understand this system when you have not seen it actually still i will try to explain it so all the surgery is done intraorally reduction is done intraorally certain screws are put intraorally but sometimes when the distal screws are difficult to put you put a small incision on the skin just a 1 cm stab incision on the skin then you put this handle into the skin now this handle has a tunnel here using this tunnel you can drill a hole you can just locate your uh, screw hole intraorally and there you can drill a hole you can use the depth gauge to uh, find the right depth for the screw and then you can put your screw this is usually used with the cheek retractors i will show you in this case there was a left angle fracture in a patient who wanted orif and uh, we have used iv eyelet here as the occlusion was not deranged very quickly we have used iv eyelets i have used this transbuccal trocar cannula set here this is the cheek retractor which is holding the cannula which is also retracting the cheek this handle is there there is a hole in the handle and a tunnel is coming through the cheek now through this tunnel i can see my hole where i need to put the uh, screw i can drill my hole i can use my depth gauge to see the depth of the length of the hole that uh, the length of the screw that i need to use and i can also fix my screw so this is the transbuccal trocar cannula set this is the case i have put the plate this is the post operative um, radiograph where the single mini plate is keeping the segments intact coming to condylar fractures the basic rule in condylar fractures is whenever there is a condylar head fracture or a high condylar neck fracture you always go for close reduction you never you can never put a plate inside the joint of a patient and in this surface which is a part of the joint so whenever there is a condylar head fracture or a low condylar neck fracture putting a mini plate is very difficult it is violating the joint so we use close reduction and imf in such cases even in adult patients even in geriatric patients and of course in pediatric patients also whenever there is a low condylar neck fracture or a subcondylar fracture you can go for open reduction the rule for orf in a condylar fracture is two mini plates that are non parallel to each other one in the anterior border one in the posterior border now this posterior border plate can also be used on the 
कैन ऑल्सो बी पुट ऑन द पोस्टीरियर सर्फेस ऑफ द मैंडेबल और ऑन द पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर ऑफ द बकल सर्फेस समटाइम्स देर इज अ क्वेश्चन आज इन एग्जाम दैट वॉट विल यू डू द ऑप्शन आर बकल बॉर्डर प्लेटिंग लिंगोल बॉर्डर प्लेटिंग सो रिमेंबर a plate in the mandible can never be put on the lingual surface you cannot sit inside the patient's mouth and drill screws from inside the mouth the plating in mandible is always and always done on the buccal cortex on the buccal surface similarly in condyle buccal surface is plated one plate in the anterior border one plate in the posterior border and the plate should not be parallel to each other they should be non parallel plates and as the rule for mini plate goes there should be at least two screws on each side of the fracture line in condyle we tend to use bicortical screws as there are no teeth here no neurovascular bundle that can be damaged so we use bicortical screws now some people have modified this design into a single plate or a delta kind of a plate which is a 3d design so this can also be used it will give a similar fixation rarely we have to use recon plate in low subcondylar fractures where we need a more rigid a load bearing fixation approaches for condyle rarely for subcondylar fractures we can go intraorally most cases condylar fractures are uh, approached extraorally through preauricular incision uh, transperotid incision a retromandibular transmesenteric incision submandibular incision or a retroauricular or an endoral incision now i want to discuss a very interesting case there was a young girl 8 year old she picked up a broken tongue cleaner from a neighbor's window she used to stay in this some slum kind of an area she picked up a broken tongue cleaner from a neighbor's window and she went up to her terrace accidentally she fell down and the tongue cleaner was impacted into her soft palate and mouth and she was brought to her parents like this this is a broken tongue cleaner and uh, it was not coming out very easily when we did a ct angiogram for this patient we saw that the tongue cleaner is going into the mouth into the soft palate into the oropharynx into the retropharyngeal area and very close to the carotid sheath she was very lucky that the sharp end of the blunt cleaner uh, tongue cleaner was outside and the blunt or the rounded end was inside so there was no vital organ injury if you see this 3d ct this tongue cleaner is going all the way here and when we did a angiogram that when we saw the uh, vital structures this tongue cleaner rounded end was just 1 mm away from this internal carotid artery she was very lucky that uh, she came to the uh, level 1 trauma center and she also had a sustained left condylar head fracture this is just to make the uh, case more interesting Uh, she was taken to ga the tongue cleaner was removed with all precautions this was a impacted tongue cleaner and for the condylar head fracture now since this was a young girl a child with mixed dentition with a high condylar fracture but derange occlusion we could not go for a no treatment protocol we had to do some treatment to correct the occlusion so give we gave arch bar and we gave guiding elastics these guiding elastics will guide the occlusion to the correct position and will also allow certain opening and closing of mouth so that there is no development of tmj ankylosis in children there are also bioresorbable implants so whenever we are putting plates in children like orif in the sub symphysis region or para symphysis region usually we remove the plates after 6 months when the fracture is healed the reason is the child is a growing child there will be development of tooth buds there will be development of the bony cortices sometimes in some studies it has shown that the metal implants will cause a uh, hampering of the proper growth of the bone so in these cases we remove the implants the metal implants uh, from the children's bones <coughs> this causes an additional burden of an additional surgery to remove the implant so to prevent that bioresorbable implants are uh, made which are used very commonly in children and they don't need to be removed they get resorbed in the body so if sir, the, this kind of a picture comes to you then it is a bioresorbable plates and bioresorbable screws they can be welded into this plates using heat and they are fused to the bone as well as the plates other rare sites are ramus fractures where there is a very good muscle encasement that is masseter is present here medial pterygoid is present on the inside so usually ramus fractures are not displaced this plating is just to show you how we plate otherwise 99% ramus fractures we don't need any plating a simple imf for one or two weeks or 
just not even that is the treatment and coronoid fractures fractures do not need any treatment coming to combination fractures there are certain combination fractures which are very commonly seen in mandible there can be one paracymphysis on opposite angle one angle and opposite condyle one paracymphysis on opposite condyle or there can be a guardsman fracture where there is fall from the uh, fall and injury in the symphysis region causing bilateral condylar fractures so the rule is <coughs> whenever there is a fracture of more than one side of mandible champi's principles don't apply we cannot expect the normal biomechanics to be applied in more than one fracture of mandible so at least one side should be fixed with rigid fixation so we prefer the more anterior or the more accessible side where we have to use rigid fixation that is a reconstruction plate and the posterior side can be plated with a mini plate for example if there is an angle and a paracymphysis fracture i will plate the paracymphysis region with a reconstruction plate and if there is a minimal displacement i will use a mini plate at the angle for example this is a guardsman fracture causing symphysis fracture bilateral condylar fracture widening of face you can see that there is a condylar head fracture so as a protocol first we did arch bars we did imf for this patient we have used reduction forceps to reduce the fragment we have used a, a reconstruction plate in the symphysis and we continue with the arch bar for the condylar fracture similarly paracymphysis and condylar fracture we use rigid fixation in the anterior mandible using a reconstruction plate and we treat the condylar head fractures with closed reduction coming to comminuted and defect fractures comminuted fracture means there is more than one fracture line which is causing more than two fracture fragments so the rule in comminuted fracture of mandible is simplification and rigid fixation just remember comminuted fracture means you have to simplify that is you have to fix all the segments of mandible using small small plates mini plates and then because this area is weak it is not able to take the load you have to give a load bearing fixation which is a reconstruction plate a rigid load bearing fixation is the rule in comminuted fracture after simplification of the fracture with mini plates also if there is a defect fracture like if all these segments are not found of or they are detached from the soft tissues and they have gone necrosed or if there is a third molar which is along with a cyst and which needs removal and there is a big defect here then you have to put a graft and whenever you use a, you use a graft you have to use it with a rigid fixation because this area is weak it will not be able to take the load so you have to give a load bearing fixation a load sharing fixation like a mini plate will not be able to hold the graft will not be able to hold the reduced bone during function like in this case there is combination along with the defect so you have simplified the uh, small small fragments using mini plate you have removed the very small fragments that will undergo necrosis and you have replaced with a graft and you have fixed the whole thing with a rigid load bearing fixation that is a reconstruction plate in the lower border using bicortical screws after doing a imf this is another case paracymphysis fractures on both sides another fracture here so i will choose a good rigid reconstruction plate and i will put it across the mandible like this a case was referred to me by uh, some uh, um, somebody known and atrophic mandible you can see that this mandible there is no alveolar bone there is only residual basal bone left and there is bilateral body fracture and somebody has tried to fix it with mini plates now this mandible has no load bearing capacity the fixation given here is absolutely wrong the kind of fixation for atrophic mandible has to be a load bearing fixation that is a good rigid reconstruction plate with bicortical screws placed on the lower border and at least two screws should be at least three screws should be placed on each side of the fracture line so there is one fracture here so three screws here minimum three screws here and minimum three screws on the other side similarly for fracture here minimum 3 screws here and minimum 3 screws on the anterior part so this is for atrophic mandible lastly i will just show you certain instruments when you are using a mini plate it is very easy to bend a mini plate anybody can do it in the ot but when you are bending a thick rigid plate like a reconstruction plate you have to use certain instruments very uh, very matlab uh, very nicely matlab it's very difficult for everybody to do it 
so these are the plate bending instrument that are used with reconstruction plates this is for in plane bending this is for out of plane bending this is for torque bending similarly this is for in plane bending or horizontal bending this is for out of plane or vertical bending and this is for twisting or torquing this can be used asked in exam as image based question these are plate bending instruments for thick plates like reconstruction plate and this is a plate cutter this round instrument with a cut in the between two instruments are used together the plate is engaged in this cut and very easily you can cut a heavy plate with this instrument this is a mini plate bending plier and you can use this very easily to bend the mini plate so i hope we have understood the concepts of mandibular fracture management i hope all your queries are solved and very soon we'll be coming up with mid face fractures i'll just show you this is a patient with lefort 3 fracture whole mid face is moving as the patient is chewing frontal bone fracture causing defect here i find this video very fascinating and i'll be showing you this mid face fracture management in the subsequent lectures thank you